Okay, so the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna open up Blender. But you need to make sure that you have the most recent version downloaded. Um, if you don't, then you can go to this website, blender.org, and you can download Blender for .orgs. Whatever the newest version is, should work fine. If you use an older version, then it will probably crash. So once you've done that, you need to go to File and click Open. You want to locate the file that says meeprigfinal.blend. So you should download it from the Google Drive in the description of the video. And then you can click the file, press open. Uh, you can control most of the rig from pose mode. So you should start out in pose mode, as you can see, up here in the top left. Let me just give you a quick uh, walkthrough of what all the bones do. So this is the rope bone. It controls the whole rig. And then we've got these two bones that control the rotation of the body. And now you'll notice that the hands do not follow this bone. They only follow the root. So if you move this object right here, you'll see that it has inverse kinematics. So this controls the hand, the rotation of the hand, and the movement of the hand. And this bone right here uh, controls the direction that the elbow is facing. So if you move it back here, it'll point that way. Now this bone right here is the head bone that controls the rotation of the head. This arrow bone controls the mouth opening and closing. So you rotate it, open, close. But one thing you'll notice is that if you try and move it in a different direction than the x-axis, it will not work. That is because I have stopped it from rotating in any other direction right here. So usually you'll want to keep this on if you want to do something really weird. So if you really need to, you can press both of those icons to unlock it and it will be able to rotate in every direction. If you open the mouth, you should be able to see this bone right here, controls the tongue. It also has that same thing where it's locked to the specific axis. So if you want it to be doing that, you'll have to just disable those right there. Now on to custom control. So I've got this bone right here that if you move it to the right, it will open the stomach. Up here, this slider controls the color of the from three different options, tan, pink, and blue. This slider right here uh, toggles the review glasses on and off. As right now, these are the only cosmetics that I have that are included with the file. Now the last one is this right here. So if you go into rendered view mode, you can actually see this, the effect of this. This changes the emissiveness of the eyes. So determines whether you want them to glow or not, just like that. And that is everything you can use in pose mode. So if you want to control the color of the eyes, you need to exit pose mode. But run up here, press an object mode or control tab. So to control the color of the eyes, you need to select this head object. And then if you go into the material tab down here, it should be on a material called eye color. Right here, you can choose the color of the eyes. So you wanna make it a nice blue here, like that. Also included in the file are some other items and things. So we've got here, a pin, a katana, a button coin, and a paintbrush. You can change the color of the paintbrush with this base color value right here. We've also got some pillow blocks right here, as you can see. And they come in three different pre-chosen colors of pillow red, pillow orange, and pillow yellow. If you want, you can also make your own color by clicking this icon right here to duplicate the material. And then on the duplicated one, you can name it whatever color you want. Say, I'm just gonna go green. And then you can adjust the base color to whatever you want. Make some nice green color. And then any other object you want, like this one, you can change this from pillow yellow to search pillow, and you can select pillow green. And the last thing are these wood blocks we've got here. They all share the same material, it's just called wood. So if you need, if you want to make some a different color, you can just click this button right here. Name whatever you want. Let's say wood dark. And then you can adjust the color, whatever you want, just like that. So if you want to build something like a structure out of these blocks, 
what I'd recommend that you do, instead of changing the base objects, is you just leave them and you make duplicates of them. Say, I want a red block, you just duplicate it with Shift D and then adjust the colors of them so that these base ones are unaffected. If you don't want these things to show up in your render, you can either just select them all, delete them, or you can disable their collection, which will remove them from the renders and in the viewport. So you can disable them individually, or you can just disable the whole collection, that's the items collection. Now onto questions that people were having with the previous one. First off, people were wondering, how can you duplicate your E? So the way that you duplicate it is, first you need to go up here and find these two objects labeled left hand IK empty and right hand IK empty. And you need to just unhide them in the viewport. Don't need to worry about the right there. Now what you want to do is just select everything. Make sure you've got the armature and both the empties and the actual heat itself. Now once you've done this, you can press Shift D to duplicate it, reposition it, wherever you want. And for some people that would be good enough uh, because this is fully functioning, it's got all the, all the bones working properly. However, something you may notice is that they share colors. And that is because they are both using the same materials for the eyes and for the face. So the way you fix this is kind of complicated. If you don't need to know this, you can skip to this timestamp on the screen. All right, so let's start with the eye color. So if we go to the second E, that we want to have a different eye color, we can go to this material right here, click this button, make a copy of it. Now we can name it something else like eye color two or something. So we'll know that it's different. Now what we want to do is just come over here and select a different color, and it will only be applied to this heap, not the other one. Perfect. It's a bit more complicated to adjust the base color half. So what we want to do first is select one of the objects in the second heap that has the base material. We want to select it, and click this button right here, make a copy of the material, and name it something else. Say, base 2. Now we need to select all of the other objects that have this color and apply the second material to them instead of the first one. So we'll start with the hand. Sometimes it's nice to hide them as you go so you know which one you've already done. So start with the hand. It's on the normal one. Just going to switch it to base two. Just hide it. This one, base. And you click this button right here to um, swap out the material. Base two, let's hide it. And base two, hide. Base two, hide. And base two, hide. And I always forget this one. This one down here, it's a separate object. Scroll up, find it, base two. And now we've got all the objects that need to be swapped out. Um, all switched over to the other material. Now something you may notice is that while it is a separate material, it's still being controlled by this control on the other rig. That's because of the driver. So the way we can fix this is by going to the shading tab and selecting one of the objects that has the base two material. Now you need to look for this node right here that has this purple value down there. That's because it has a driver applied. So if we right click on this value, epsilon, and then click open drivers editor. Now we should get this window that pops up. And what we can do is click on this box again so it's selected, and click on this right here, it says default value. Once you've done that, you should be able to come over here and see the section that says object. See, right now it is referring to the original armature named just armature. We just swap it over to the second one, named armature.001. Look over here, click it, there we go. Now we can close out of this, and let's actually go down here to this second box. Let's left click it, Go down here, select purple value by right clicking it, open drivers editor, and then select default value again. And now we should see this object again, set to armature, and it to the other one. And we should be good to go. Now if we go back to the layout tab, and we see this first rig, this slider is not adjusting the second one at all. Then we go to the second one, 
and this one is controlling it. Perfect, that's just what we want. So now we can have two separate rigs with two separate materials. Once you're done with that, you'll also probably want to hide these IK empty objects. They're not needed to be seen. Okay, so in my last video, a bunch of people were asking about the fingers and if you could move them. So I had actually kind of forgotten to make custom control objects for them, but they do still have bones. So if you want to move the fingers, you just have to go over here to the data section while in pose mode and click on this collection that says fingers, click this little eye icon, and that should enable those bones. Now you'll see they just have the default blender bone shape. Now, be warned, the rigging on this isn't great, the weight painting. Uh, it can get kind of weird when you try not to bend them. So yeah, usually you're not gonna really wanna use that a whole ton because it's not super great looking, but if you really need to, you can. All right, now if you want the Yeep to have something in its hand that like follows its hand where it moves around, I can show you how to do that. So first, you want to find the object that you want and just take it, make a copy of it, and move it over. And now what you want to do is line it up so that it um, is resting properly in the hand. I think something like that looks nice. So what you want to do is select the object, then hold shift and click on the armature of the Yeep you want to have it follow. And then you want to go into pose mode. Now, you should be able to select the bone that you want for whichever hand it should be in, and press Control p Now you should be able to select this option that says bone. Once you've done this, if you rotate or move this object, the item should follow it around. Also, if in the future I add more models, I will probably add them into a separate file and you'll need to import them. Uh, and they should be blend files. So there's a special way you have to import. Them. So first make sure you're an object node, that's important. Then go up here to file and click append. Once you do, you should be in, that you need to locate that file that has the models in it you should have downloaded from the Google Drive. Once you do, you can locate that file that I've added maybe in the future <laughs> that has the other um, items I've modeled and you can double click on it. Then you can go to collection, double click, and select all the collections that are in there, click append, and all of the models should be imported into your scene like this. Ooh.